Hey, we're back in the warehouse and pulling plain text messages out of thin air. On this episode of Hacker Warehouse, Tradecraft. Hey everyone, I'm Troy Brown with Hacker Warehouse TV, and today we're going to show you how to decode pager messages with your nifty RTL SDR. So some of you may be asking, what is a pager and how is that even relevant anymore? Well, a pager is the original form of text messaging that allows one person to send a message to hundreds or even thousands of people at once. Paging started as a tone-only system, like the kind you see at a restaurant when they hand you that light up hockey puck coaster thingy. They send a radio frequency coded to your coaster and it lights up, telling you it's time to get your food on. Now, paging was that simple concept for a long while. And sometime in the late 80s and early 90s, they added numbers. So you could send a page and include a callback number. Well, people love this concept. Pagers got extremely popular, and some even got smart and sometimes added a little 911 at the end to indicate that their phone number was urgent and you needed to call them back right away. Yeah, it was about as annoying as it is today when someone marks their email with urgent. Then, in the late 90s, they added alphanumeric capabilities and thus started the beginning of this beautiful thing that we now call texting which led to the emoji and the poop emoji and the emoji movie, basically the future downfall of humankind. But until we all turn into emojis, pagers are still in use today because they're considered fast and reliable. So let me ask you a question. Which is faster, a pager or a text message? Well, according to a bunch of sellers on eBay who just happen to be bookies with excellent feedback, pagers are the fastest way to get sports scores and make bets. And if you want to get in on the action instantly, you're going to need a pager because text messages just ain't up to the task. Seriously though, pager networks are thought to be more reliable. A pager transmitter typically broadcasts a single pager transmission called a page, and that transmission then gets rebroadcasted by other towers, which then gets rebroadcast to even more towers, and depending on the size of the pager network, a single pager message can get rebroadcast hundreds or even thousands of times over a huge area. We're talking like statewide. And because pager networks are used over multiple frequencies from 100 megahertz to over a gigahertz, they can penetrate areas that cell phone signals just can't. That's why they're still used by reputable professionals who need information transmitted quickly and reliably, like doctors, postal workers, and the mob. Now, the original pager protocol is called POGSAG, and that stands for piece of crap security and grandma. No, that's not right. No, no. It was developed during the 70s and 80s by the Post Office Code Standardization Advisory Group, or POGSAG. And you, you know a protocol's old when the post office developed it. And that's what we still call it today. POGSAC data today is also known as just pager data to us common folk. Now, here's how a page works. Let's say you want to send hello world to a friend. A POGSAC transmitter then converts our hello world text message to a digital message, say in hexadecimal, then to ones and zeros. Those ones and zeros then get converted to audio using the radio in the encoder and a protocol called FSK, or frequency shift key. Now, once that message is sent, the pager network runs on a primary carrier frequency, and tiny shifts up or down on that frequency represent those ones and zeros of our message. A classic pager like the one a doctor wears listens on that carrier frequency for all incoming messages. However, it only responds to its uniquely coded tone, similar to the way that Alexa creepily listens to everything you say, but only responds when it hears, hey Alexa. Once it hears that special tone, it decodes the rest of that message and displays that single message on the pager's tiny little LCD screen. Now, here's the beauty of SDR and where you come in. We can tune into a pager network's carrier frequency and listen to those tiny shifts in the tones. While listening, we can then pipe that audio out to some decoding software and read all the messages. We can do this because the messages are generally not encrypted in any way and are just audio tones ready to be plucked and decoded from the air by anyone with simple software. So if you listen to those audio tones, it sounds like, well, I would describe it as basically like an achievement tone followed by a wolf devouring something. It's like, so if, if you hear something like that, then achievement unlocked, you've just found a pager frequency. So in order to start capturing some messages, we're going to follow a few simple installation steps. We'll of course need some software to make this all happen, so SDR Sharp will do the trick. We'll use this to tune to a pager signal and decode it using PDW, a pager decoder for Windows. Go ahead and download both from the provided links and install them. 
Once downloaded, open STR Sharp, and there are some configuration settings that should be tweaked. First, select the RTL SDR from the source list and click on the cogwheel to change the RTL SDR settings. We need to make sure that our sample rate is low enough that we don't have any gaps in the audio. If you try to use too high of a sample rate, your computer will bog down and cause breaks in the audio stream, which trip up the decoder. So, set your sample rate just low enough that you don't hear any breaks in the feed. Then pipe your audio out of the SDR software and into the decoding package like PDW. We recommend a sample rate of 1.024 million samples per second and the RF gain around 20 dB. From there, turn the audio filter and squelching off, have a shift of 10, and set the bandwidth to around 12,500. Now, we need the audio coming out of SDR Sharp to be piped to PDW. We can do this one of two ways. The first and simplest way is to use a physical audio cable and plug one end into line in and the other end into line out. The second method is to use a virtual cable such as DB cable to do the exact same thing. When you first open PDW, you might get some errors. Just ignore them for now and go to the Interface tab and select Setup. Here we'll be selecting our method of audio piping. Choose the Sound Card option and select Line In if you're using a physical cable or a VB cable if you're using a virtual one. You can then press OK and go to the Options tab and select Options. We now want to check to make sure the pog sag and flex are being decoded. From there, we can tune to a pager signal. There are many different frequencies to find pagers, but I have the most luck finding them between 929 and 931 megahertz. Here's what it looks like to get a pager signal in SDR Sharp. If we then flip back over to PDW, it should start populating data. If you're getting a poor signal, try moving closer to your target, having a better antenna placement, or increasing your computer's volume. Now, we're gonna pipe the data to our decoding software. Once you fully decode the audio, you'll now have an unencrypted tone-based text from the pager network conveniently on a text file. So, full disclosure, since we can't legally share any sensitive information we might have received, we're simply gonna generalize what we see and read them out loud here, but redact all the names. Okay, so while we were hunting for messages, we went through a lot of data within a 12-hour capture window. Some of the messages we found are interesting, but many just aren't. However, you can find some hidden gems like this. This message about a woman, her name, her birthday, and that she was being taken by stretcher, and right under that, a stab victim is en route to that arrive at the hospital in six minutes. Here's some NCAA basketball scores. That's pretty awesome. Looks like those eBay bookies were right. Here we see a message coming from a .gov address mentioning allegations of abuse from a client and who reported them. What? Oh, and here's some juicy gossip at the office that was meant to be private. Whoa, nice job on the hookup, by the way. Bookies weren't counting on that score. Here's an interesting case about a drunk man with a knife claiming a woman is stealing from him. And here's a message about a Windows server being down. We can see the server's internal IP address and URL. It seems to be a school, judging the email address name. Here's some information about a database instance. By itself, it doesn't say much, but we do know the exact version number of software they're using and a path. This could be helpful in conjunction with other information you might gather on your reconnaissance phase of a pen test. We could also see alerts from banks and their transfers, thankfully with the last four digits of the account. There doesn't appear to be any associated names, so I guess they're safe for now. Since PDW saves everything to a log file, we can easily grep through the data to find something specific we're looking for, such as socials or phone numbers or keywords, etc. And now I know what you're thinking, this shouldn't be possible. However, it is possible, and even worse, it's common practice to transmit unencrypted. Now, as an SDR activity, why wouldn't you be interested in listening to what's going on around you? It's so much fun to see what's being broadcast all over the nation and seeing what unencrypted traffic is just flowing through the air. What's crazy is that nothing with personal health information is supposed to be sent over unencrypted pagers because, according to HIPAA, sending personal information over unencrypted pagers violates your obligation to follow HIPAA. In fact, it's against the law for a hospital to send your personal information through the air unencrypted, which makes sense, right? See, imagine this. You aren't feeling well, and you need to go to the doctors, maybe even the ER. And while you're at the office, you have to sign in your name, birthday, social, and what you're in the ER for. Now, imagine after signing in all this data, the person who takes account of all this information just starts shouting it out loud for everyone to hear. I mean, that's exactly what the hospitals and their emergency care vendors are still doing when they send unencrypted messages over the pager network. Okay, so as you can see, this is one of the most interesting and easy applications of SDR. However, on a serious note, please remember to keep it between the laws. Even though the signals are on your property, it doesn't necessarily mean those are your signals. 
Don't decrypt any messages, don't distribute any sensitive information you might find, no matter how unsecure, how unencrypted, or interesting it might be. Just don't do it. Well, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial on using the RTL SDR. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions. I'm Troy with Hacker Warehouse, and until next time, remember, please keep it between the walls.